Uh, hello everyone, this is O and A level tutor and in today's video we're solving the Cambridge International AS and A level Chemistry May June 2024 Paper 2 Variant 1 So this exam is for 1 hour and 15 minutes and I have the threshold for this paper as well This is the threshold for May June 2024 Chemistry So this paper is this one component to 1 and the total marks are 60 and in order to get an A in this paper you have to score 36 and if you look at the other variants this is the minimum score so I would say the difficulty level would be medium not that hard okay let's start with the first question question number one the elements of group 17 are called halogens complete the table so we have halogens and we have to tell their color at the 293 kelvins okay so this is in the notes as well in chapter number uh, chapter 2 in organic group 17 we have the physical properties of group 17 elements so we need to find the colors for chlorine bromine and iodine iodine sorry so chlorine it is green green or yellow you can name any color and for bromine it's orange or brown typically brown and for iodine you have gray and black you can say dark gray, you can say black, anything is acceptable, typically gray or black. Okay, so yeah, these are the colors for each of these gases. So, now I'm just gonna write their colors, because at room temperature they are gaseous, right? So, chlorine is green. And bromine is brown, as we saw. And our iodine is grey or you can say dark grey. Okay, so I actually have the complete notes from first chapter to the last chapter and they have all the details mentioned. And if you want these notes, you can join my Patreon, I will show it over here. And you will have to uh, do the subscription, the $5 subscription and you will get access to all of these notes the past papers and also the sole past paper I do so yeah you're gonna get all of these perks if you subscribe to the Patreon if you're interested you can do that okay let's get back to the paper B part state the trend in volatility of halogens chlorine, bromine and iodine explain your answer okay so we have to tell about the trends in volatility let's understand what volatility is volatility basically refers to how easily a substance can evaporate so if you look at the trend, the fluorine, uh, it has a really high boiling point and then the boiling point decreases, sorry increases, no, uh, my bad, this is a very, very low boiling point and this is a very high boiling point, right, so the boiling point increases, that means their capability to easily evaporate decreases, right, because of the highly high boiling point, they can't easily evaporate so going down the group the boiling point of the elements increases which means that the halogens volatility decreases so fluorine is our most volatile and iodine is our least volatile okay so why does this volatility decrease let's see basically the more electrons there are in a molecule the greater is the instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces so therefore the larger molecule the stronger the van der Waal forces between the molecules and this is why as we go down the group it is difficult to separate the molecules and the melting and the boiling point increases and we already know if the boiling point is increasing the volatility will decrease so that is basically the reason this mentioned in the notes as well we know that the size increases right and then also you can see over here that the uh, increase in van der Waals force and then there is a decrease in volatility so yeah that is what you will write over here let's get back to the question so you would say volatility decreases decreases and you will write in paragraphs but I am just writing in points and you can say more electrons in molecules And 
so there's an increased strength of the instantaneous dipole due dipole force sorry force uh, okay let's move on Iodine is made by reacting bromine with sodium iodide. Construct an ionic equation for the reaction of bromine with sodium iodine. Okay, so we have a similar reaction in the notes. So this is the similar reaction. It's not the exact one, but it's similar. So we ha basically have chlorine and uh, NaBr. There's going to be a displacement reaction. Uh, bromine is going to be displaced by chlorine. So now we have NaCl and then the gas. So we're going to follow the same proce process in this reaction as well. It's just a different halogen. Okay. So we will have bromine plus sodium iodide, which gives us sodium bromide plus iodine, right? And to balance this out, we will have 2 over here and 2 over here, right? And to write the ionic equations, I know that this is, uh, we need to separate uh, the ones that do not take part. So this is 0, and over here is negative 1. So the oxidation state changes. And this is negative 1, this is 0. And this is our spectator because it does not change. It's plus 1 over here and plus 1 over here. So we're going to remove this in the ionic equation. So our ionic equation will be Br. 2 plus 2i negative which gives us uh, 2br negative plus i2 and that is our balanced ionic equation state the role of bromine in this reaction okay so you can see that bromine changes the oxidation state of iodine from negative 1 to 0 so it basically oxidizes bro uh, iodine and it reduces itself if it is oxidizing others and reducing itself this is the definition for the oxidizing agent so we will say that bromine is an oxidizing agent agent and we can also say that basically because it is oxidizing from negative 1 to 0 it is basically removing an electron from iodine so we will say it removes electron from iodide ions and you can also say at the, instead of this that it basically increases the oxidation number from negative 1 to 0 anything is acceptable over here okay let's move on uh, concentrated sulfuric acid is added to separate samples of uh, samples containing equal amounts of NaCl, NaBr, NaI. All three samples init initially react to produce the hydrogen halide. Write an equation to describe the acid base reaction that occurs with concentrated sulfuric acid reaction with NaBr. So I have the reaction over here in the notes. It's mentioned that basically we have NaBr, right? Uh, yeah, NaBr with sulfuric acid. So this is the reaction over here. Sorry. I thought I had my highlighter. So this is the reaction over here. And this is the products. We get HBr and NaHSO4 solid. So I'm just going to write this equation over here. Uh, just a sec. It's going to be NaBr plus H2SO4. That gives us HBr plus NaHSO4 you can write the state symbols as well but it's not necessary in over in this question because they did not ask us but you can see the state symbol over here liquid, solid, gas and solid deduce the which sodium halide NaCl, NaBr and NI produces the largest percentage yield of hydrogen halide when concentrated sulfuric acid X and, uh, is added 
Explain your answer by considering the relative reactivity of halide ions as reducing agents. Okay, this is mentioned in the notes as well. And the answer is basically sodium chloride. And this is because uh, sodium chloride in, in, in sodium chloride, the chloride ion is not a strong reducing agent. Cl negative, not a strong reducing agent. And Br negative and I negative are strong enough reducing agents to react further. So we will say that Br negative and I negative are strong, stronger to react further. You can also say that basically the ability to behave as a reducing agent increases down the group. And that's why Cl negative is not strong enough to reduce H2SO4 and, and Br negative and I negative can react further because uh, the ability to do a behave as a reducing agent increases down the group. So yeah, that is basically the reasoning for this question. And that is it for question number one. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, question number two, sulfur chloride in a liquid is a liquid at room temperature when SCl2 is added to water misty fumes are seen in and a solution is made that turns indicator red. Identify the type of reactions when uh, occurs when SCl2 is added into water. So for adding into water that basically means it is a hydrolysis. H-Y-D-R-O-L-Y-S-I-S Name a chloride of different period uh, of different period three element that is also a liquid at room temperature and produces misty fumes when added to water. Okay, so they're trying they're asking us to name a chloride that is going to be actually silicon tetrachloride. You can say S I C L four. This is mentioned in the notes as well. Not sure which chapter exactly, but I think it's in the physical in this first. Uh, part of the of the chat of the slavers, but I'm not sure. I'll let you know in the comments. So yeah, this is mentioned in the notes as well. Silicon tetrachloride. A molecule of SCl2 contains SC SCl uh, bonds, covalent bonds. Complete the dot and cross diagram to show the arrangement of outer electrons in the molecule of SCl2. Okay. So, sulfur, we know it has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 electrons in its valence shell. So, two of them are going to be the lone pairs. Not two, sorry. Two pairs. So, four electrons are lone. And then it's going to be one bonding pair over here. And one bonding pair over here. And of course, chlorine has its lone pairs as well. So these are going to be the lone pairs for chlorine. Okay. Predict the shape of and the angle in the molecule of SCL2 by using the Vesper theory. Okay. So it is mentioned in the notes as well in the Vesper theory. If you have two lone pairs, these two lone pairs, and two bonding pairs, these are the bonding pairs. Let me use a different highlight. Uh, two bonding pairs. Then due to these lone pairs, their greatest repulsion is between the two lone pairs, pushing the bonds closer together. And this, due to this reason, the shape is non-linear and the angle is 104.5 degrees. So this is the, why is this angle tilted? Because of these lone pair repulsion, right? So this, this is the repulsion and basically we get this type of angle, 104.5 with non-linear. So that is what we're going to write over here. We're going to say that it is non-linear shape and it's going to be 104.5 degrees. In marking scheme, the range is from 103 to 105, but yeah, this is actually the exact value. Part C sodium magnesium nitride 
is a crystalline solid. Reduce the oxidation numbers of magnesium and nitrogen in magnesium nitride to complete the table. Okay, we already know that magnesium is in from the group 2 and it has 2 electrons in its valence shell, so it has an oxidation number of plus 2. And we know this is a compound, the uh, overall oxidation state of a compound is 0. So it's going to be 3 times plus 2 plus 2 times of x because this is 3, this is 2 equals to 0. So 3 2 are 6 plus 2x equals 0. 2x equals minus 6 and x equals minus 3. So basically the oxidation of nitrogen over here is minus 3. So magnesium we already know it's plus 2 and nitrogen is minus 3, right? Okay, plus 2 minus 3. Let's move on. Magnesium nitride reacts with an excess of water to produce ammonia and magnesium hydroxide only. Construct an equation to this reaction. Okay, so we've already given the products and the reactants as well. So let's just write them. Magnesium nitride reacts with water and that produces uh, magnesium hydroxide we know that the formula for magnesium hydroxide is MgOH and this is from group 2 so the 2 is gonna come over here and then we have ammonia as well okay so 3 magnesium over here so we're gonna have to have 3 over here as well and there is 2 nitrogen over here so we're gonna ha have to have 2 nitrogen over here 2 3's are 6 and uh, 3 2 uh, 6, 6 and 6, 12. So we basically have 12 hydrogen over here. So 6 times 2, we're going to have 12 hydrogen over here as well. And if you look at the oxygens, they are already balanced. 6 over here and 6 over here. So this is the balanced equation. Explain why the solution produced in this reaction in part C second has a pH greater than 7. 7. Refer to the products of the reaction in your answer. Okay, basically we have this hydroxide that if we put in water it, it dis dissociates to give us that OH negative so due to that OH negative ion we get that uh, pH greater than 7 because it is a basic like hydroxide gives us that uh, greater pH and to explain this we can say that we have the dissoci dissociation dissociation of magnesium hydroxide and you can also say that there is an acid base reaction which causes this pH of water by ammonia water by ammonia okay this was the reasoning let's move on boron nitride is a white solid that melts above 2 2900 degrees celsius fig 2.2 shows the power of the lattice structure of a crystal of boron nitride. So we have boron atom and nitrogen atom. Deduce the empirical formula for boron nitride. So if you look at just one hexagon, so we have, uh, let's see, these are the filled circles which I am going to represent as boron and these hollow are going to be our nitrogen. You can look at this, any of these hexagons and it's going to be I'm just going to drawing this one right and it's going to be a filled over here and hollow over here so basically we have 3 nitrogen and 3 uh, 3 uh, boron so basically it's 3 ratio 3 so we can say simplify this to 1 ratio 1 so basically the formula is going to be BN so BN is the answer Suggest the identity of another crystalline solid that has an atoms arranged in similar uh, to that of boron nitride. We can see that it has an hexagonal structure with these weak intermolecular forces between the layers. And it is going to be slippery because of these weak forces. And we know that these are all the properties of graphite, which has these hexagonal structures with weak intermolecular forces between the layers. So we're going to say it is graphite. And that is it for question number two. Question number three, part A, 
define leach at Lea's principle okay so this is a simple question it's mentioned in the notes as well basically if a change in condition occurs the equilibrium shifts to minimize the change in the condition if a change in conditions occur the uh, just a sec yeah the equilibrium equilibrium shifts to minimize the change in conditions okay let's move on uh, reaction 1 describes the reversible reaction between yellow Fe3 plus and colorless SC and negative to produce red Fe SC and 2 plus this is the reaction a mixture of Fe3 plus SCN and Fe SCN is at equilibrium at 20 degrees Celsius then temperature of the mixture is then increased to 50 degrees Celsius and allowed to reach equilibrium deduce the change that occur if any in the equilibrium mixture at 50 compared to the equilibrium mixture at 20 so we're basically increasing the temperature we know that when we increase the temperature the equilibrium the reaction moves to that side where it is endothermic so if you look at the positive uh, positive reaction it is negative which means exo forward reaction is exo backward reaction is endo and we know that the increase in temperature shifts the reaction to the side which is endo so the reaction will move backwards so the this red color FECSCN will be converted back to this color this yellow color so we can say that we will have more yellow because this red is now converted into back to yellow it's move it, the reaction moves backward so we can say more red or you could say less yellow less means pale paler paler yellow sorry pale is actually dark wait let me see uh, more red and uh, wait I think I've done a mistake just a sec so more yellow yeah more yeah I've done a mistake over here sorry my bad the reasoning was right that the reaction shifts this way and we have more red I don't know why I wrote more uh, more yellow sorry not more red I don't know why I wrote more red it should be more yellow because this red is being converted back to yellow right and paler red pale means less so this is the answer for the first part change in relative concentration of FESCN2 plus okay so you can see that the concentration is decreasing as the reaction is moving downward uh, backwards so the concentration is lower change in the value of equilibrium constant kc okay let's look at the notes the formula for equilibrium constant is basically the uh, concentration of the uh, products over the concentration of the reactants over here we can see that the concentration of the products is decreasing and the reactants is increasing right because the reaction is moving downwards so products decrease decrease reactants increase increase so when the denominator is decrease uh, decre increasing so the value of kc will decrease obviously because when the denominator increases the kc has to decrease right it's obvious so that's why we will say that it will also lower okay let's move forward in another experiment equimolar amounts of fe3 plus and sc and negative are mixed together allowed to reach equilibrium the total mixture is 25 centimeter cube at equilibrium the mixture contains this much and this much calculate the initial mole in mole of fe3 plus added to scn to produce this so we're given the moles uh, concentration of scn and fe scn but we do not have the concentration of fe3 plus but we know that one mole it uh, uses one mole of SCN so the molar ratio is equal so that means the mole of Fe will be equal to the mole of SCN and we also know that if we want to find the uh, mole of SCN it's going to be equal to the original amount of SCN minus the Fe SCN 
produced and we need to find this original uh, amount of SCN right because we know that this original amount of SCN will be equal to the initial or the original amount of FE because the molar ratio is same so if we want to find this original FE it's going to be SCN negative minus plus sorry because this moves to the right left hand side FECN produced so SCN this is 1.3 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 plus this FECN is 0.3 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 which in total gives us 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 right but this is the concentration of Fe right but we need to find the amount in moles so all we have to do is just multiply to find the amount in moles we have to multiply this concentration by the uh, volume so the volume is already given in the question which is 25 right so just multiply this by the volume but you have to convert it into dm cube and this gives us 4.0 into 10 raised to the power minus 5 and that is the answer for the initial amount of Fe let's move on calculate Kc for the reaction in, and give SC on it we already know that it's going to be concentration of per, uh, sorry moles product over the, oh sorry concentration of products over the concentration of reactants so product is this one it's going to be 0 0.3 Kc equals 0.3 10 raised to the power minus 3 over the reactants and both of the reactants have the same concentration this and this the mole ratio is same so it's going to be 1.3 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 into 1.3 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 right and this is going to give us uh, 178 it's going to be 1 to 177.7 something but round it off to 178 and this is the answer for kc but now let's find the units so over here it's going to be concentration over concentration times concentration right so it's overall it's gonna be concentration minus one and concentration is mole per uh, mole uh, dm minus three right and if you multiply it by minus one it becomes mole minus one dm three plus three so mole minus one dm plus three that is the answer for the units and that is it for question number three let's move on to the next question question number four define the enthalpy change of formation this is simple it is when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements elements in the standard standard states iron is made from iron 3 oxide and is heated with carbon monoxide as shown by reaction 2 table 4.1 shows the enthalpy change of formation uh, data measured at 298 and 101 kilopascals so we need to write the enthalpy change of formation equations we know that basically the product is the substance formed from its elements in the standard state Fe standard state is solid and oxygen standard state is O2 it's a diatomic and gas which gives us this compound this substance and then we need to balance the equation it's going to be 2 and 3 by 2 and for carbon monoxide we will have carbon in standard state which is solid with oxygen sorry oxygen in its standard state which is gaseous to give us carbon monoxide that's gaseous as well and this we need to oh, I also forgot to mention this is solid as in standard state and we have balanced out the equation as well so yeah this is the equations with their standard states use the data in table 4.1 to calculate the enthalpy change of reaction in kilojoule per mole so the formula for enthalpy change of reaction is basically uh, products enthalpy of products minus enthalpy of reactants 
so products is basically let's see products in products we have fe and carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is already in its standard state so we just have to write the enthalpy change of formation for carbon mono uh, carbon dioxide and it is given over here it is minus 3 3 3.395 so products is going to be 3.33 uh, 3, sorry 393.5 and the mole of carbon is 3 so it's going to be multiplied by 3 uh, let's just write that again it's really confusing so 3 multiplied by 393.5 this is the products minus the reactants the reactants is going to be carbon monoxide and this compound so come for carbon monoxide is minus uh, 110 and this is going to be multiplied by 3 plus uh, this formation of this which is minus a24 plus and we don't have any multiplication over here so minus a24 alone Eight to four point two. Okay, let's do the calculations. So three into minus one ten point five minus eight to four point eight to four point two. Uh, this gives us uh, minus of uh, sorry minus of minus one one five five point seven okay and then three times three nine three point five is one one eight zero point five so it's going to be one one eight zero minus one one five five point seven okay it should be a plus over here and overall it's going to be negative so 24.8 and that is it for question number four i think i did one mistake over here and this formula should be plus yes i think it should be plus or maybe i did a mistake because if we do a plus over here only then we get negative over here and the answer is correct so yeah i think wait yeah, I have done a mistake. Wait, let me see. It is going to be minus, but... Wait. Yeah, it's a plus over here, right? Minus and minus. Wait. Uh, it has to be a plus over here. And then it gives us... 1180 minus... Oh yes, I know my mistake. There was a negative over here. My bad guys. So, it's going to be negative over here. And this is going to be plus. So, it's going to be... Uh, sorry, not plus. Minus, because this was minus, right? Minus 1180.5 And minus minus plus 1155.7 which gives us minus 24.8 kilojoule per mole so this is the final answer minus 24.8 sorry for the uh, mistake question number 5 hydrocarbon molecules contain covalent bonds part a define covalent bond electrostatic force of attraction between nuclei of two atoms and shared pair of electrons is called covalent bond so it's basic now let's move to the next part. Carbon to carbon double bond is an alkene made from sigma and pi bond. Identify the hybridization of carbon atoms and carbon to carbon double bond in alkene. So it's basic in carbon to carbon double bond. The hybridization is sp2. Draw a label diagram to show in terms of orbital overlap the sigma bond and the pi bond. So in sigma bond it is head to head overlap. So it looks something like this. We have one. 
and the other end it is a head to head overlap like this and in pi bond it is a parallel overlap so it will look something like this the overlap is now pa uh, done parallelly like this so this is that overlap now parallel overlap in electrophilic reactions involving alkenes the, uh, the pi bond is of carbon to carbon double bond is broken so just one <coughs> sorry the one difference between sigma bond and pi bond that explains why pi bond is broken into electrophilic addition of uh, reaction involving alkenes so that difference is basically the pair of electrons in pi bond are further away from the nuclei so weaker attraction you can also say that the pair of electrons in the sigma bond are closer together so stronger elect uh, uh, stronger attractions anyway around so you would say a uh, pair of electrons in sigma bond are closer so closer to the nuclei right so stronger attraction attraction complete the fig 5.1 to show the mechanism for the electrophilic addition of hydrogen bromide to 2 methyl propene to produce a major organic product okay so we have this hydrogen bromide we know that there are the partial charges on this partial positive on hydrogen and partial negative on ne uh, bromine and first of all we have this arrow from the double bond to this partial positive charge right sorry and then we have from hydrogen to bromine and this bond breaks which gives us this bromide ion with negative charge and what happens is that let's draw that carbon H3 carbon H H and now we get this positive charge over here so this lone pair now tax over here and we get H3 C C C H H CH3 now this bond this new bond is formed between carbon and bromine and yeah this is how we show the lone pairs the arrows and the partial charges and everything so yeah this is how you do question number six let's move on to question sorry question number five let's move on to question number six uh a part v shows stereoisomerism explain what is meant by stereoisomerism so this is basic it means that the have the molecule have same structural formula and same molecular formula but a different arrangement arrangement in space in 3D space you can say space Okay, let's move on to the next part. Reduce the number of stereoisomerisms of V. So if you look at V, we have two chiral carbons. This is the one and this is the one. So there are gonna be two of uh two structure uh, two of these uh stereoisomerism due to the chiral centers and then there's gonna be another one due to this carbon to carbon double bond. Uh, so basically we have that cis trans isomerism due to this and then the two chiral carbon because the carbon to carbon double bond gives us the cis trans isomerisms so there's going to be total of two plus one right uh two chiral carbon and one cis trans right and if we do the other combinations uh from the chiral yeah, the chiral because there are two chiral centers and each gives us uh, isomerism, right? So it's gonna be two chiral centers. So one center gives two, this center also gives two, and then over here, uh, wait, uh, stereoisomerism also gives us carbon to carbon double bond, right? Cis and trans. But if we do the crossing of these, it's gonna give us eight, I think. Because we could have one uh, one cis with uh, other chiral 
and then the other trans with the other chiral so overall it's gonna be eight total eight stereo isomerism right I'm just gonna confirm this but I think it's eight so you're gonna say that there are total eight stereo isomerisms isomers and you're gonna say that because of two chiral car centers and one carbon to carbon double bond so you have to draw each of them with the chiral centers because there are gonna be a different combination maybe there are both cis and then this uh, maybe it's a trans with this uh, other 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 chiral so you have to draw all the combinations and I think there's a shortcut to this wait let me see if I do 3 P3 3C yeah I don't think so it's yeah for now it's just you have to do it individually let's move on reduce the so yeah you have to say it's 8 and then the reasons you will give is 2 chiral centers and 1 carbon to carbon producing a cistrons De reduce the molecular formula of V so you're gonna count the number of carbons we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so 13 carbons and similarly you're gonna count the hydrogens it's gonna be 20 hydrogens uh, 20 hydrogens and 3 oxygens you can see 1, 2, 3 oxygens and this one has 3 if you count this because the uh, the outer one is CH3 right so it's gonna have 3 hydrogens and this one is completely filled so no hydrogen this one has 2 hydrogens this one is 1 hydrogen this one is 2 hydrogen so you, you're gonna do it and then add up all of the hydrogens this will give you 20 this one also has 3 hydrogens so yeah just add all of these up and you will get 20 hydrogens name all the functional groups present in B so we can see there is an uh, C double bond o, uh, over here yeah this one this is the ester one and we have this carbonyl ketone one and this C double bond C alkene one so three functional groups so ester and then we have the ketone one C double bond O voila and then we have the uh, the alkene one C double bond C right so these are all of our functional groups fig 6.2 shows the two reactions involving V identify the role of free agent T for each functional group that reacts in reaction 1 okay so role of T in reaction 1 you can see that what does this T do initially we had O and it has been reduced to OH initially we had uh, this double bond and it has been reduced to a single bond so we must basically have a reducing agent for these two bonds so it's going to be reducing agent for C double bond O and C double bond C suggest the identity of reagent U in reaction so what is the difference so basically what is this reagent U doing it is reducing this to this but not reducing our double bond so we need a weaker reducing agent that reduces the carbon double bond O but not the uh, the double bond C double bond C so that is basically is given in the notes as well it is Na pH4 which only reduces the ketones so not the other ketone group part C both functional group in one molecule react with uh, an inorganic reagent to form one molecule of Q and one molecule of methanol as shown in Fig 6.3 the mass spectrum of Q is shown in 6.1 only peaks with Me greater than the 198 is shown calculate the abundance of X at Me201 so this is the M peak this is the M plus 1 peak right and we have to find the value of X we know the formula for this is equal uh, is basically N which is the number of carbon atoms equals to the uh, the wait let me see yeah so the abundance of the M plus 1P M please sorry wait yeah the uh, the abundance of M plus 1 peak over the abundance multiplied by the M peak right the mass 
the mass of m plus 1 over the m peak. So what is the value of n, the number of carbon atoms? Let's see. This mass spectrum is for q. And we can see from this whole compound y, we have subtracted one carbon, which is over here in the methanol. So let's count the number of carbons over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So total 13 carbons minus this one carbon which is present in methanol because over here this total box is 13 carbon and this gives us one carbon and this gives us 12. So 12 plus 1 13. So this Q has 12 carbon. So the value of N is 12. 12 equals to the abundance of M plus 1 peak. M plus 1 peak uh, abundance is X multiplied by the mass of M plus 1 peak which is 201 divided by the abundance of M peak which is 100 multiplied by the mass which is 200 sorry sorry not abundance I think I've done a mistake 100 into x yeah we don't multiply it by the abundance we multiply it by 100 and 1.1 1 .1. yeah sorry my bad that was a mistake. We don't multiply it by abundance. So it's going to be x into 100 over 1.1 into uh, 201, right? Wait. Yeah. 1.1 into let's just write the formula again because it's getting confusing so n is basically equal to the abundance multiplied by hundred over the abundance this is for m plus one abundance of m plus one and abundance of m multiplied by 1.1 so 12 equals to abundance of m plus one that is x multiplied by 100 over the abundance of this peak is 100 multiplied by 1.1 so you don't write these me you only use the abundance in the formula i will give you uh, the, in the notes sorry yeah in the notes if you have read the notes you know the formula so now let's simplify the values so yeah my bad sorry for the wrong uh, calculation so this is gonna be simplified to get x equals to 13.2 if you do the multiplication you will get value of x equals to 13.2 and that is the answer let's move on q contains only hydroxyl functional groups complete the table 6.1 to show the observation that occur when 2 4 d and ph is added to the simple samples of separate samples of y and q so why i know that 2 4 d and ph uh, only reacts with the ketones right the ketone group so, uh, wait, which, what were the two things that we have? It is Y and Q. So Y has the ketone group, but Q does not have a ketone group, right? Uh, wait, let me see. Is of Y and Q. Because we have an organic agent. And we have Q, right? So there will be no reaction with uh, Y. Sorry, with Q. And there will be a reaction with Y. Yeah, that is going to be the answer. Because we have given that it does not contain a ketone group. It only contains hydroxyl groups. So that's why it cannot react with 2,4-D and pH. So there's going to be, and we know that when we reacted with this reagent, the precipitate color is orange, so orange PPT, precipitate, and no reaction, no precipitate, sorry, not reaction, no precipitate, because it does not react. <laughs> Under certain conditions, 0 0.02 mole of Q reacts with an excess of sodium to produce total of 44.8 gas at RT. Okay, wait. Uh, let me just check quickly that what is the uh, at STP what is the, ga the volume of gas at STP it is 
at STP it is 22.414 right okay let's get back to the question so uh, let's see let's, we, we're given that it has this much volume of uh, gas we know that the volume of gas produced is equal to the number of moles time uh, at STP which is 21.414 so volume of gas is 44.8 divided by 1000 to convert it into DMQ equals to N into 22.414 so like this we get the value of n is 0 0.002 so basically that gas produced is 0 0.02 moles and we also know that 0 0.02 mole of q reacted to produce 0 0.02 mole of that gas and we can also write the equation for this we will have this structure r we don't need to write that whole thing let's just represent it by r and we will react it with sodium to get r o and then this h will be displaced by the sodium and we will get that gas which is actually hydrogen gas because when you displace this with H you get hydrogen gas over here right and we we can calculate using this molar ratio that 0 0.02 mole reacted to produce 0 0.02 mole of that gas so basically over here it's going to be balanced out with 1 because 1 mole uh, 1 ratio 1 so you can say 0 0.002 mole 0 0.002 mole so one ratio one is that ratio so that means if we're getting one ratio in this r there must be two hydroxyl group over here two oh groups to balance it out two oh groups over here which gives us this one over two h2 right so basically what i'm trying to say is that this indicates that oh groups in q react with na to produce h2o in the molar ratio one mole oh ratio one by two mole H2. So to balance it out, that means this must have two OH group, right? So the number of OH groups will be two. Let's move on. Use the table in 6.2 to describe the and explain the two differences between the infrared spectrum of Y and Q in a region above 1500. So if we use the table, and we need to find the two differences of spectrum between Y and Q. So first difference will be that Y will have a absorption peak between 670 to 1740 because of HC double bond O group and Q will not right because uh, Q does not have a Q only has hydroxyl group it does not have a ketone group C double bond O group and also Q will have absorption peak at 3200 between 3600 because of its OH group right because this has hydroxyl group in Q it was mentioned if you go back Q contains only hydroxyl group so this hydroxyl group will give this peak over here we can check that the uh, hydroxyl group yeah this one OH group gives a peak just like over here right you can see over here hydroxyl group and similarly that's why we will say that it will give but why will not and that is it for this part and yeah this is it for question number six and yeah we have completed the whole paper if you have any questions regarding this paper just let me know and if you want live one to one sessions you can subscribe to my patreon we will have a free demo session and then you can continue from there on and if you want the notes i use in this paper you have to subscribe to the patreon uh, it's just a five dollar subscription and then you will get access to all of the perks the notes to solve past papers and everything so yeah this is for today's paper if you have any other question you can ask and i'll see you guys in the next paper bye